Welcome to part two of the home server build. In this video, I'm gonna be migrating over my security camera video recording and my home assistant server. So I'm gonna start off with the NVR system. The first thing I've gotta do is go into my Unify gateway and create a VLAN for my cameras to keep them separated from the rest of my network. The reason I'm doing this is that I wanna keep my cameras separated from the rest of my home network. And the existing NVR that I'm replacing actually had a built-in PoE switch, so it was a naturally segregated system. Now, once I had the VLAN set up, I moved all the cameras over to ports on my Unify gateway, and then I mapped all those ports to the new VLAN that I had set up for my cameras. Now, the software that I use for the security cameras is called Axis Camera Station, and this runs on Windows. So the next thing I had to do was set up a Windows 10 virtual machine. I pretty much just followed the Proxmox documentation for this, so there's nothing really interesting about the VM setup here. Once I had Windows installed and updated everything, I went into Proxmox and added a second Ethernet device onto the virtual machine and set that thing to target the new VLAN that I'd created for the cameras. And here it's indicated by the tag equals three. I then rebooted the virtual machine to make sure that it was seeing the new network interface and verified that it was receiving an IP on my network. And then I installed the Axis software onto Windows and verified that the system could see all my cameras. One advantage of moving my NVR system over to the server is that it means I no longer needed the older system and I could recover the two 16 terabyte Exos drives that I'd added to that system in the past. I reformatted those drives and created a new ZFS mirror on them and then set up a SMB share. Now, having them set up on an SMB share means that I'll be able to access them directly so that I can look at NVR recordings without having to go through the virtual machine. Now, back inside the VM, I set up the cameras to record to that new SMB share, and now basically everything was finished except for final configuration of all the security stuff. Now, I do want to stop here for a second just to talk about why I'm using this particular NVR software, because I'm sure that there's going to be a few people out there curious why I didn't go with something like Frigate or Blue Iris. If you've never heard of Axis, they're a commercial security company and their products are NDAA compliant. I've checked and most of my cameras are actually manufactured in Europe, so I've got far less concern about things like built-in backdoors or potentially compromised hardware with these cameras. Further, these cameras have on-device video compression and object analytics, not just motion detection. So my server won't end up having to do any sort of image processing or AI operations in order to detect vehicles or people or animals on my property. Now, while there are good quality open source NVR software systems available, I really just wanted to stick with the Axis software because I'm already familiar with it and it's very tightly integrated with my cameras and their features, such as the video doorbell function that goes automatically through the Axis phone app. Now, having said all that, if Axis stuff is so great, why would I want to get rid of the purpose built NVR server that I have? Well, it's because it's really inefficient and it's loud. Axis gear is also really expensive and the licenses for the software are actually tied to the server rather than the cameras. I'm hoping that I'll be able to revert it back to its factory state and then be able to sell it for enough to pay for new licenses for the self-hosted system because that's not insignificant. But now that all the camera stuff is working, the next thing I needed to tackle was migrating my Home Assistant server over. And that's actually a pretty easy process. The first step is just to go into the existing Home Assistant server and create a full backup. Once that's finished processing, I downloaded the file and moved it over to the SSD on the Proxmox server so that it could be accessed locally by the new Home Assistant virtual machine which I set up using one of the Proxmox community scripts. Once the Home Assistant operating system was installed, I accessed the VM through the console and loaded up the backup file. 
After the backup file had been loaded, I was greeted by my fully configured Home Assistant setup, except a lot of the devices weren't loading. And that's because all of my ESP Home Wi-Fi devices are actually on, yet again, a separate VLAN. So I went into Proxmox and added a second network device again, tagged for my IoT VLAN, and assigned that to the Home Assistant virtual machine. Rebooted it, made sure it was getting an IP address on my network, and just like that, all of my Wi-Fi devices started showing up. The last thing I needed to do was move over my USB Z-Wave and Zigbee dongles and pass those USB devices through to the virtual machine. Once that was done, almost everything was just working in Home Assistant, with the exception of one of my Z-Wave door locks, which I only needed to re-interview before it started working again, and my robot vacuum, which I still haven't actually been able to get totally reconfigured. The final tweak that I wanted to do for this system did require a bit of a compromise, and that was that my big NAS SMB share had to kind of go away. Sort of. See, having those two big Toshiba drives that I had installed spinning all the time really didn't make a lot of sense. And so I spent actually hours with HD Parm trying to get them to spin down on a timer. And I learned a couple things. First, Samba does some small writes about once a minute that actually prevent those drives from ever going into standby. So just by having that pool set up as SMB storage was costing me power. Considering that I will actually almost never be using the SMB share on those drives because I have the much faster NVMe-based drive, I decided to just comment that pool out of the SMB config, and I can get it back up within a few minutes if I ever need it, but those drives are still going to be available to Proxmox for backups, and that's really their main use anyway. The second big thing I learned is that no matter what I did, the standby timer just wouldn't seem to take on those drives. But after doing some testing, it looks like the timer was working and the drives were spinning down. It's just that the drive information would never show that. It's weird. But it worked. I don't know. Anyway, let me say that I know some people are going to say spinning down drives can be hard on their lifespan, but... These drives are only going to be hit like a couple times a week for like backups or big file movements. So they're going to spend 99% of their time in standby. And that saves about 8 to 10 watts of power, which is around 20% of this server's total power draw at idle. So for me, it was definitely worth doing. So at this point, I have actually accomplished pretty much all of the goals that I set out with for this system. And I think it's time to assess how it's affected the total power budget for my self-hosted services. Prior to setting up this home server, I had the unified dream machine and that drew around 32 watts power. The Axis in VR server drew around 90 watts power, and that was inclusive of the security cameras, since they were all powered via the server's PoE ports. I also had the little Home Assistant Mini PC, and that drew around 10 watts of power. That means I was a little over 130 watts in total power draw previously. In the new setup, I still have the Unify UDM Pro, but it also now has the burden of powering all the cameras and the new Microtik SFP switch that I added. So its total power draw is up to around 70 watts. The new server idles around 38 watts. That's an increase of about 11 watts from the previous video, mostly due to the two extra drives for the NVR, which are constantly being written to by the cameras. The Z-Wave and Zigbee dongles added like a couple of watts, but that's not really a big deal. And the new virtual machines added very, very little power draw to the system. At any rate, I am under 110 watts of total power at idle now, which means I've achieved about 20 watts or over 15% in total power reduction while adding NAS and cloud drive capabilities. I've reduced noise considerably. and have gained a huge amount of expansion potential. I'd say that's not too bad. So time to wrap this video up. The server build has been a pretty interesting experience. I've learned quite a bit. And fortunately, I have very few regrets with the new hardware I've selected and the direction that I went with the configuration. I still need to get some case rails because this thing is currently sitting on the bottom of the rack, but everything is in a pretty good state at the moment. And I'm happy with it. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.